It's been a bit quiet surrounding Sea of Thieves lately, but that's all changing today. We have three different kinds of updates. We have the patch 1.06, which comes with a major amount of cosmetics, which will be shown in the video for the most part. I will show them all on the side, with some exceptions that are actually apparently not in the game yet. Then we have a developer update with various new kinds of information, and we also have some extra info on how to get some free skins with the Chips Ahoy program, or whatever you want to call it, that's going on at the moment. So there's a lot to cover, let's start with the patch notes and then look a little bit into the future from there and also talk about how to get the free skins. For the patch notes, Ahoy Pirates! Read your feedback in the customization mega threads and in other parts of the community about the limited variety of available options to dress and customize your pirate. This week's patch delivers the first wave of cosmetics into shops in the form of expanded sets for Admiral, Bill Shred, Sea Dog and Sovereign. Alongside the new cosmetics variation, you'll find that the shop stock varies from outpost to outpost depending on the region you're in. Don't worry, you can pick up your new build red gear in all regions, but you'll have to head to the Ancient Isles to pick up the new Sovereign set. That's why it took me a while to make this video, by the way. I had to go to the different places to actually look at the shop for the different items first. In addition to more customization parts, patch 1.06 also includes our regular performance improvements and bug fixes. Customization Variety Regional Stock Shopkeepers in different regions now only stock certain item sets due to some mistimed deliveries. Strike a pose. We've expanded our clothing range to include the Executive Admiral, Grand Admiral, Rotten Biltred, Castaway Biltred, Corsair Sea Dog, Ruffian Sea Dog and Imperial Sovereign sets. So there's a lot going on here. I will show all these on the side while we continue with the rest of the content and the other kind of customizations for your ship, etc. You will keep on seeing all of those as we go through here. A lot of really cool customizations, in my opinion. A lot more piratey than before as well, while the Admiral ones obviously go in the other direction. Ship shape. Multiple sets of ship cosmetics have been added to the shipwright stock. Now you can purchase and equip Grand Admiral, Castaway Bilge Red, Ruffian Sea Dog, and Imperial Sovereign Ship customization sets. I will say that the figure heads here are basically still the same, just recolors once again, but everything else is very different. You have your different ship colors with different paint jobs all around them, and you have your completely different sails. So there's still enough customization outside of that, in my opinion. Unfortunately, it seems like the Imperial Sovereign ship it was either glitched or just not in the game yet, because I couldn't find that at the outpost where we had the rest of the Imperial Sovereign stuff. Might have just been a glitch or I might have been blind, but I'm sure if it's not there, it will be in the game soon. Oh, shiny! Visit the weapon shops at the many outposts to find their stocks of Grand Admiral, Castaway, Biltrad, Ruffian Sea Dog and Imperial Sovereign weapons. Fancy a new weapon style? We're sure one of these will take your fancy. Some of them look very similar to others we already have, some of them look very different, so a little bit of everything here. Launch Crew Eye of Reach In celebration of being at sea for a month, we've added a special weapon to the store. This limited edition item will only be available for two weeks, so grab yours while you still can at the very reasonable price of one gold. And on the side of this, it has a bottle, it actually says Launch Crew, which you can see here. So it's pretty neat, even though as the weapon it's not the most stylish one or anything, but it will definitely be a collectible for when the game's out for a while. Updates. Tutorial invulnerability. Players are no longer invulnerable during parts of the tutorial when first launching the game. This should resolve confusion around players seemingly being invulnerable at outpost. We take all reports very seriously, so please log a support ticket and we will investigate further. Skeletons accuracy. When shooting cannons from islands at long distances, skeletons accuracy has been reduced. We read your feedback that it was a little extreme, Skelly OP. Merchant Voyages. It is no longer possible to force merchant voyages to request delivery to a specific outpost. Now you'll have to earn your chatter. As far as I understand it, this means the end of pretty much every merchant cheese strat we had beforehand and maybe someone will come up with a new one, but otherwise we'll just have to do it the regular way. Sneaky Climbing. The bell on the small ship has been moved to the other side of the ladder to avoid accidentally ringing. We are redecorating. With the ammo crate and bell moved, what are we moving next? Fixed Issues. PC only. Rebinding the F key will no longer soft lock the radial. This has been a top reported issue to support and we believe this is now resolved. If you're still encountering issues with the rebind locking the screen, please lock a support ticket and we'll investigate further. Stow and disengage can now be rebound to the same button on a controller. Incorrect company icons will no longer be displayed for a split second if trying to get reputation from two different trading companies. 
Joining a dead player whose ship is parked at an active skeleton fort will no longer prevent the joining player's radials from being opened. Recent player lists will no longer be delayed in updating players from other crews. Hunter of Accursed Crews and Hunter of the Fort Skulls Commendations now track. Voyage inventory message is now translated when there are no voyages in the inventory. Loot items can no longer be dropped behind the captain's table on the small ship when trying to place them on the table. Ship's robes now cast shadows on the deck for the true immersion. Musical instruments can now be used immediately after interacting with parts of the ship. PC only. Half V-Sync option now works as intended. Resolved an issue which could cause players to fail to migrate and remain on low population servers. This means that chest hunting for the highest amount of chests will be a lot harder now as you will probably migrate to another server and have more fighting against you again, more competition. So that's going to be a much bigger challenge than before if it works as intended. Performance improvements. Repetitive actions from players will no longer impact the network stability for other players. Frame rate lock option is no longer disabled when VSync is enabled. Significant reductions in time taken to return from the Ferry of the Damned. I'm assuming this means like when you already walked through the door at the Ferry of the Damned and not when you're on the Ferry of the Damned until the door opens. Images in all chests now load gracefully when browsing. Multiple server crash fixes. Known issues, some players cannot see their downloadable content in game. Then a link to a support article if you need help with that. The usual one where some customizations don't look like they should look, which is still being worked on. And players are experiencing delayed achievements and commendations from in-game actions, which is being worked on as well. Outside of these patch notes, according to Guthalion, there is also a graphic change to the draw distance and the fog on PC, whereas the anti-aliasing and the overall clarity closer to islands seem to be degraded. I'm not sure if this is correct. This is something he stated that might not have been mentioned in the patch, if true. And then we have the developer update from today. This is not too long, but brings a fair bit of new information for the upcoming content. So I think it's also interesting to hear about this. I will link it down below if you want to watch the full thing. The quick summary here. Three teams are working separately on updates for Sea of Thieves. One is working on the Hungering Deep, one is working on Cursed Sails, and one is working on Forsaken Shores. And that way, basically, they have different timeframes for different updates and can put different amounts of effort into them. Those teams are also working on the weekly updates and on the other fixes as well. The Hungering Deep itself will be a medium-sized content update. We can't really tell what that is yet because we don't really know what a medium-sized upgrade will look like to us. Considering that this patch actually had quite a lot of new customization, which I would think would be a medium-sized update, I, apparently it wasn't for them, so I would think that a medium-sized update could be decently large depending on what your expectations are. And alongside with that, the weekly events will also start. Cursed Sail and Forsaken Shores, on the other hand, have longer lead times because they're already being worked on right now. And Hungering Deep is not even out, so there's a lot more room, like a few months, because they come out during summer. And as such, will both be bigger content updates. Along with that, quality of life improvements are still being worked on. For example, next week we are expected to see the public and private crew settings, so you can sail on a galleon with three people if you like, if you choose to have a private crew and only let your friends in. Also, they're working on reducing the patch sizes because the current size is just a little bit too large. Things that are being worked on a little bit more into the future are that players can hand others resources, so you can give bananas to one of your friends, and that nameplates will be hidden underwater so you can sneak up to other ships better. So again, quite a lot to look forward to and quite a lot of things where they listen to the community, which I think is very, very good. Once again, this patch looks very good to me and the outlook from here on out looks very good to me as well. But we also have another thing, which is the customization through Chips Ahoy. Now, the parts of this set are all in the same style as the Black Dog set and the Ebony weapons, basically. So it's not completely unfamiliar. It's these black things with green crystals on them and it basically completes the set. You have the compass, the bucket, the shovel, and the tank yard. Now, the way you normally get those is by buying Chips Ahoy in America and, yeah, well, redeeming the codes that are on the package. But the campaign is, for some reasons, I think, set up in a really cool way that thankfully makes it a fair bit easier. First of all, you do not have to buy those things. You can literally go into a store and take pictures of the codes and use them. 
Now, obviously, this is something you would probably feel a little bit bad for, even if you're a pirate, because the person that buys the chips afterwards would not be able to redeem the code, even though it's on the front of the packet. However, that is actually not the case here, as these codes can be used multiple times. These codes have a cooldown, so they can't be used 100 times right after each other, but they can be used multiple times after this cooldown runs out. So even if you were to take photos of them, then somebody else would buy the packet, you could still redeem them, and somebody else who buys the Chips Ahoy later could still redeem the packet. And people found out, and this is especially good news for people around the world, where you don't even have that ad campaign. And as such, there is now a Reddit thread where somebody collects all the codes that are out so far from people that have posted them there, and you can copy those codes in the redemption system and try to use them. You will not always be able to use them. Most of the time, most of them are used, are on cooldown, because obviously a lot of people are trying to get them, especially at the moment. But generally speaking, over time, especially when the hype for them has died down a little bit, you should be able to unlock all of these cosmetics. Obviously, this goes quicker if everyone who buys codes or find codes posts them online as well, so more people can redeem them. So if you're one of those people who have access to them and want to buy some, be nice and post them there to help everyone else out as well once you've redeemed them for yourself. When you redeem a code on cooldown, it will give you an error message highlighting the code red. If you redeem a code that actually works, then you won't get any message at all and you will get an email a few hours later with the code for your cosmetic that you can then redeem. So in a few days, you should be able to unlock all these. Just keep looking at the codes and checking back on them. And that is it for today. Massive update. I am really looking forward to what comes out of this. If you're new to the channel, feel free to click the sub button and the bell really helps me out. Or maybe check out some of the other Sea of Thieves videos that I have. Other than that, see you for the next one tomorrow. Thank you very much for watching. Duke Sloth, out. What shall we do when we have no outro? What shall we do when we have no outro? What shall we do when we have no outro for a YouTube video? Sing about new cosmetics, sing about new cosmetics, sing about new cosmetics just to end the video.